I just watched the episode that came out yesterday of Keeping Fish Simple, and he was touring this fish farm in Australia. Nick was, a guy named Trevor, and Trevor was talking about brine shrimp and using, a, they call them Artemia, that's how he refers to them anyway, and that's, I guess, the, the scientific name. And so I've been whining about the brine shrimp I've been using, and that's these, that they're just too damn small. And he was talking about the really small brine shrimp turn out to be really good for feeding really small fry, live food right away. And he was talking about quarries, and uh, well, it would probably work for bettas too, because they're really small. And there was some other fish that he was talking about. So I will quit whining, right? Bleh, I will quit whining about these. Uh, but I will look for larger ones as well. I'll go back to the last ones I bought. Bought them from Amazon. They were in a packet. Can't remember what. I'm just going to put this together now. There's a tablespoon of uh, salt that went in there. And this is running longer than a minute. So it's going to be a video, not a reel or a short on YouTube. And let's see, what do we got here? Um, where to go? It's there somewhere. A uh, big old heaping spoon. of uh, brine shrimp eggs and I usually go a little more than that so you know close to two because anything worth doing is worth overdoing so there's a second spoonful and by tomorrow uh, these will hatch out one thing I've noticed with this particular variety though it does leave a lot of shells behind uh, they sift off pretty well but let's see if I can find some here uh, probably not. Uh, they usually hang around the water line. Um, little specks that they're in the house in the, in the bed and quarry tank. But anyway, that's kind of my story. Um, so I guess, you know, one thing it says on here, uh, quality is short. And you know what? I have a really good hatch rate with these things. So I guess that's not the complaint. It was just that they were, I thought they were too small. But they work. So bigger might be better for bigger fish. And I have been trying to grow these things out past baby size into an adult size, and that is not working for me. Uh, I'm gonna keep working on that. I've got a tank down there, that little five gallon that I'm trying to do that with, and maybe someday I'll, I'll land on it, figure it out. I might have to buy some something to measure the salinity, and I don't have anything like that now. So anyway, and this is my, uh, do-it-yourself brine shrimp hatchery. These are, they're called CO2 caps. Uh, buy those on eBay. Uh, they usually come four or five or six in a pack. Uh, and they might take a little while to get there because I think they ship from China. They work really well and they tie right into the, the regular old, I think that, what is that, quarter inch, uh, quarter inch outside diameter uh, airline. And then I got a couple valves. So the air's coming in from this one going that way up and then this is just wrapping up and around, and that's the, the and there's the valve on that, that, the tube I use to drain them out when they're done. And when they're done, I just shut the air supply off and uh, let the, the brine shrimp settle to the bottom of the bottle, and then most of the empty eggs float to the top, or the eggshells float to the top, but there's always a lot of eggshells that seem to get tied up in this mess, and it's usually the first blob out uh, out of the tube, so I've got to figure out a way around that. Maybe I need to drain that first blop out of it. That's technical jargon for those of you that don't know that. Uh, out of the tube uh, into a different container, and then I always drain them into, uh, I've got a one liter measuring cup, so I drain them into that, and then I end up putting them into one of these uh, old Talanti ice cream cups. This is where I keep the eggs. So I keep that one sealed. Uh, and I, I keep, this is the one I open regularly to fill this, so that way they stay fresher longer. And I keep all of this in the refrigerator, okay? And then the brine shrimp, I leave them in the salt water in one of these Talati cups, and they're usually about up to, you know, to this line or so, so it's about that much water, and then, you know, brine shrimp settle to the bottom. Uh, but it keeps them, they actually stay alive for a couple of days like that in the fridge. And uh, uh, then... Uh, I just use a pipette, uh, you know, one of the little, wherever they went, I've got one around here somewhere, one of these little little pipettes to suck them out and, and you know, squirt them into the fish tanks. And 
it works really well. It's well, it works really well for me. Um, and maybe it'll work well for you. And if you have any questions, comments, smart ass remarks, whatever, let me know. Um, and, and I'm always keen to learn new tricks. But anyway, uh, back to uh, how this whole thing started. Nick Keeping Fish Simple, his new video today was it's about two hours long, but it was really interesting going through this guy's fish farm and all his techniques. Uh, and uh, I would suggest give it a watch. And that's where he was talking about using uh, really small brine shrimp, uh, the really small artemia, uh, to feed really small fry, and it works. So, because that's what I've been doing without even realizing. It. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all on the rebound. It's Garage Aquatics 2023. My name's Ron, and everybody have a great weekend.